Today we're going to show you how to make an electronic launcher. Hi, my name is Martin Anderson and we are at DLF. This is Magic Open Source and today we're going to build a very simple but effective electronic launcher. This project is part of our Ideas sponsorship with Kerry, since Nicolas Petrucci was interested in building a ball launcher for his show. He contacted us and we offered him building in exchange for showing it in the video log. So if you do have an idea that you want to share, we can offer you products, assembly, advertisement and 3D printing for free. You can learn how this works on our website. We'll start showing the component parts of our electronic launcher. As you can see, it's a catapult built with just a few pieces. A mechanical part, just some zip ties, a binder clip, a spoon, some screws, and just two wood pieces. Also, we'll be using a blocking mechanism. The electronic part is just a remote, a servo motor, a servo controller RF, an advanced battery holder, and a rechargeable battery and a charger. The assembly is so simple that I'm gonna barely stop to explain it. We'll use a wood base to distribute the pieces. This one is 10 by 13 centimeters and a thickness of 10 millimeters. Also, we have another piece the size of the binder clip. In our case, it's a 52 by 62 millimeters and it works to elevate the mechanism and give the catapult's arm more travel. We made some holes to the binder clip so we can attach a couple of zip ties to hold the spoon. With a few more, we can also hold the top part. We lock the binder clip to the small wood piece with a larger zip tie. We use some screws and washers to hold them back. Finally, we put two zip ties chained up to the spoon's neck. We adjust this, and we'll use the other one to regulate the firepower later on. Now let's go with the electronic part. We're using a lithium-ion rechargeable battery, along with an advanced battery holder. This battery holder is quite useful for a couple of reasons. First, it has a battery charging indicator, a charging port to connect the charger, screws connection to put the power source cable without the need to solder them, an on-off switch with a LED indicator. Also, two holes that allow us to screw easily, which is useful in a lot of projects. We can use other kind of power source, like maybe AA batteries. The initial investment will be cheaper, but in the end we'll be wasting more in battery replacement than what we save for the initial investment. Now let's head to the RF servo controller circuit. This is what allows us to activate the servo with a remote. With some wires we'll make some connections between the battery and the circuit and connect the servo in the other side. In this case we have to configure the circuit to match the initial and final position with the locking mechanism. We'll also configure it in toggle mode and with energy saving activated. We will also have to set up the energy input for 3 to 5 volts. This is made by changing the connection with a soldering iron down here, or ask us to send you an already configured, since by default the input settings is from 8 to 5 volts. Finally, if we want to, we can solder a button to the circuit side's connections. This allows us to activate it manually without the remote. If you have any questions, you can consult the product instruction in the support section where the whole circuit is explained in detail. The servo we're using is a standard one, which has enough strength for the whole task, and is mounted on the locking mechanism allowing us to load and fire our catapult. Now, once everything is connected, we test it if it works as it should. At last, we can screw everything to the base, but pay attention when placing the catapult arm so the zip tie remains aligned with the locking mechanism. Once everything is set up, we'll adjust the zip tie to give it the proper firepower according to our needs. If we want to give it a professional touch, we can add a rubber sheet beneath the base and so, reducing noise and give it an anti-slip property. The functioning is as easy as it looks. To test the battery, we'll press this button. To charge it, we'll plug the charger to the port and this to a USB port. To load the catapult, we have to open the locking mechanism. We can do it with the remote, but it's more convenient with the external button, which we can optionally add. You press the spoon and then activate the servo so it catches the zip tie. 
then load the projectile and it's ready to use. To shoot the catapult without the audience noticing us pushing the remote, you can watch our previous episode, where we explain a bunch of ways to activate a remote in an invisible way. So basically that's all you need to know, it's only a matter of playing with it, test it and adapt it to different launching objects. All the electronics and the locking mechanism can be found on our website, the other pieces are actually easy to find. Finally, I want to thank Milo from Idea Labs team, which he helped me with the brainstorming with the testing and the building of the electronic launcher. Since before finding a good design, we tried other not so good designs. And that's it! I hope you liked today's episode. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. See you in the next episode of Magic Open Source.